Hello, I am Majida Molich from University of Sarajevo. I work for the uh, Faculty of the Civil Engineering uh, uh, Department of the Geodesy and Geoinformatics. Uh, this is a pleasure to be uh, uh, with you at the conference. And uh, uh, my uh, young um, colleague, Randa Natrash, and me will present um, some some of our research uh, and uh, first Randa will say hello to you. Thank you. Uh, good day to all of you. It's a pleasure to take part in this conference. Uh, my name is Randa Natras and I'm PhD candidate at Technical University of Munich at the Department of Aerospace and Geodesy. And uh, now we could start with our presentation. So, uh, the title of our presentation today is Space Weather Impact to the Environment and its Monitoring by Geodetic Data. So, the co-author Meji Demulic and Randa Natras from University of Sarajevo and Uni Technical University of, of Dominic. Today we are going to uh, uh, to talk about space weather, some introduction, definition, history and problem, and also we will talk about uh, how to monitor uh, space weather using uh, global navigation satellite data. We will show you some uh, research and case studies. Um, let me start with the definition. So, space weather. Uh, is condition and uh, processes in space occurring on the sun that have the potential to infect the near Earth environment. Space weather can produce changes in the interplanetary magnetic field. Uh, the term uh, first used in the 1950s and common usage is started in 1990. Medical processes in the outer atmosphere of the sun emit a, a continuous stream of the plasma called solar wind. The first from but conceptually related to the terrestrial weather of the atmosphere of the planet Earth, meaning uh, troposphere and uh, stratosphere. Um, we are showing this nice picture uh, to illustrate uh, uh, the sun with the complex structure and uh, the very tiny cycle here representing our planet Earth with the magnetosphere around, which is uh, protector, our protector of the very uh, huge uh, amount of the radiation from the space and uh, similar. Uh, if we are talking about Weather, we, we must uh, mention several new phenomena as, a, as a sunspots, solar flare, corona mass ejection or abbrevi abbreviated CME, solar wind, magnetic storm, and so on. Uh, as a definitions, let me define that phenomena and say that sunspots are darker, cooler area of the sur uh, surface of the sun in a region called the photosphere. Solar flare are sudden brightening of the star, an eruptive event in the solar atmosphere caused by the magnetic reconnection. Simie or uh, corona mass ejections, an uh, event in which a large cloud of the en energetic and highly magnetized plasma erupts from the solar corona into the space it, and uh, simia can cause radio and magnetic disturbances of the Earth. Geomagnetic storms transfer of energy from the solar wind into the Earth's magnetosphere and rapid magnetic field variation. So this is very important in the magnet, uh, manifestation of the space weather of the Earth. The, this picture show a system of the uh, sun and Earth and many 
uh, satellites around different on a different altitude also uh, one plane rockets and so on and uh, so what what are possible causes uh, this is a very important to say that supermagnetic storm can cause life threatening power outage, satellite damage, and since that, communication failure, navigation problem, and many others. The figure show many different uh, modern infrastructure which can be damaged by this uh, event from the uh, space, but also astronauts are uh, under risk, but also uh, the crew in the in the plane, but also the passenger as we are going to talk later on. Um, as a as I am geodesist, um, uh, I need to say that uh, my subject, actually my interest, my scientific interest is global navigation satellite uh, system uh, precise positioning but what is it a global navigation satellite system uh, to explain to participants who don't know what is it uh, so GNSS actually is a system of the system of the satellite system uh, provided by different countries uh, very popular American GPS, uh, Russian GLONASS, uh, China's Beidou, Galileo, um, owner of the Galileo is owned by Euro, Euro, European Union and uh, we use signal from that system for the positioning but uh, this is a very important to say that uh, space weather uh, can corrupt a signal and we lose uh, quality of our observation but also GNSS can be used to monitor space weather in one um, invert task opposite way of, of thinking let me say total electron content uh, as uh, one very important parameter which represent uh, state of the ionosphere can be uh, estimated from GNSS observation. This is our very very important parameter during our research we are presenting. So uh, let me conclude that modern society has become dependent of the technological advances is transformation communication, navigation, but also uh, we have uh, some uh, study uh, which uh, show health problem uh, because the effect of the space weather, it means radiation from space uh, can be very um, bad for health of the passenger in the air traffic. Uh, radiation of the flight attitude attitudes can be 20 to 70 times stronger than at sea level. So it means passengers have increased risk of leukemia. The, this is a time to show what we were doing uh, in our uh, department and uh, uh, we will shortly explain you. Investigation of space weather impact on the ionosphere and positioning. Objectives were to study geomagnetic storms and solar eruptions, solar flares, and their effect on the ionosphere, as they cause irregularities in the ionospheric electron density. They affect also applications which rely on GNSS, such as positioning. In this research, we studied a low-frequency GNSS positioning. It is uh, based on strategy used is ionosphere free liner combination L3. This combination eliminates the first order ionospheric terms. But higher order ionospheric terms remain and they need to be considered in precise GNSS application. So in the, these studies we investigated impact on the ionosphere 
and precise point positioning, CPCs, which means draw frequency positioning and L3 combination. So he, here are results of first paper of St. Patrick's Day storm case. On left side figures show VPEC variability at EPN station in Sarajevo, and lower figure is differences between observed VTEC and VTEC mean. VTEC mean is calculated as mean value for quite those days of the month. These days are days without any geomagnetic disturbances, and they can be seen as regular VTEC variation. So, uh, period uh, geomagnetic storm. So if we look from the 17 March, we can see high increase of the value, which reached 50 tech units. Differences between observed VTEC and VTEC mean or regular VTEC shows two peaks. One peak is uh, around local noon, and second peak is in the evening. So ionization was for more than 20 tech units higher than it would be expected on quiet days. Few days afterwards, we see decline of the values. And here differences show that values were to minus 15 tech units lower than regular VTEC variation. And this period of lower values we can call as recovery phase of the storm. While the first day of the storm, 17 March, was main phase of the storm. Positioning estimates uh, shows that uh, kinematic processing results for EPN station Sarajevo in east component, north component, and up component. When we look at the period of the St. Patrick's storm, we see residuals in uh, processing results. And these residuals are visible in all three components. And the most, uh, the highest are in the up component, as up component is the most sensitive to this variation. In the up component, uh, the highest error reach in this period was two point um, was zero point two meter or two decimeter. Also, when we look standard deviation, we see that the highest standard deviation is uh, evident uh, in up component. Did more research on these days, precisely on. 5th of March, there were high intense snowfall. Days before 5th of March were days with relatively warm temperature for spring, and then it suddenly uh, temperature dropped. And on 5th March and a few days after have been very intense snowfall. As snow is accumulated on GNSS station, it causes that signals are reflected from the snow surface and also uh, cause signal scattering. Second source of the errors are the changes in the lower atmosphere, that is troposphere. That intense um, variation troposphere can induce significant errors in positioning. So we can conclude that the first, uh, uh, so first tier time frame of the positioning errors are due to terrestrial weather impact, and the second time frame when we see increased positioning errors are due to space weather effect. The next slide uh, explains correlation between tropical-like cyclone in the Mediterranean scene and in this, and the space weather. 
what was it about? Actually, we wanted to uh, explore uh, ionosphere response uh, to the Medicana. What is Medicana? Medicana is a tropical-like cyclone in Mediterranean Sea and uh, uh, we explore three of that cases uh, in the 2014, 16 and 17. We use the GNS uh, total electron content estimated uh, using a program we shell from uh, uh, International Center for the Theoretical Physics in Trieste and also we use the station in uh, Mediterranean but also uh, further you see here this is a Mediterranean Sea, this is uh, Italy, Balkan, Africa and uh, here this is the uh, Isle of the Medicane uh, this is a case from 2014. Uh, the Italian uh, European permanent station Lampada is placed on the island uh, very close to the eye of the uh, tropical uh, cyclone. So what we find out actually, I will show you very, very shortly for only one slide. Uh, you, I show you uh, Lampada was a very, Lampada station was a very uh, close to the center of the cyclone. Uh, and uh, you can see this is a profile of the tech value, uh, vertical tech uh, value. Uh, and you see a, a, the maximum at the local noon, it was actually uh, twice bigger than the other station who, which are far from the center. Uh, another slide show something different. This is a, a Medicana, Medicana happened in November 2017. It is a time series of the parameter uh, vertical tech sigma uh, calculated using this formula and uh, um, these are uh, time series of that parameters. The last case study I am presenting here is uh, ionospheral uh, lithosphere coupling related to the earthquake in Zagreb uh, which happened in uh, March 2020. Uh, and objective actually was uh, investigation of the uh, lithosphere ionosphere correlation. This is just preliminary, preliminary results, and uh, uh, also we use the station uh, near in Croatia, Chakovets. It was uh, the nearest uh, European permanent network station with the open data. I think we, we were uh, find out two peaks in a data. Uh, what is a graph? This is a time series of the differences uh, of the vertical tech in uh, Chakovets and in Graz and both stations are uh, in the zone of the earthquake influence. Uh, as a conclusion, I can say, say that uh, we investigate space weather and its impact of the earth environment, research results with application in positioning space weather, monitoring meteorology, uh, meteorological and earthquake studies. All study cases show a correlation between uh, GNSS uh, total electron content and the space weather events. Earthquake in Zagreb preliminary results are interesting but need more observation and research. For the further work we can say more stat statistical analysis, GNS data closer to the epicenter of the earthquake and also artificial intelligence method should be applied. And, uh, Finally, GNSS tech analysis show potential for usage in the environmental study. Uh, this is a list of some literature we use uh, for the investigation. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to participate in that conference. Thank you very much for the organizer for such a big and nice meeting.
goodbye from Sarajevo.